to FBI files. The House Government Reform and Oversight Committee heard testimony Wednesday from Craig Livingstone, former White House Personnel Security Office Director, Bernard Nussbaum, former White House Counsel, and Anthony Marcisa, who handled the collection of FBI files. Yesterday, we aired the first portion of this seven-hour hearing. Now, the final four hours of Wednesday's hearing, chaired by Republican Bill Clinton. The committee will come back to order, and the chair now recognizes the gentleman from Minnesota, Mr. Peterson, for five minutes. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I'm not sure uh, who I should ask this question of, but uh, this list that uh, was in the vault it was described by one of you, I believe, maybe Mr. Livingstone, uh, as being on green and white paper, uh, pewter paper. I don't know which one of you had mentioned. Maybe that was you, Mr. Marcisa. Uh, uh, typically, that kind of paper is what's used on mainframe computers. Uh, I haven't really seen people using green and white barred paper since we've gotten away from mainframes into PCs. Is that... Uh, it's the wide paper that generally is on mainframes? Yes, sir. Does that, does that mean that this list maybe came from a mainframe computer? As I recall, that's what it looked like, sir. Does the Secret Service have a mainframe computer? Do any of you know? Is that what they use for this, um, their list? I don't know, sir. Probably above your pay grade, huh? I don't know, sir. I know that they have two databases and it's, there's different printouts that they can print from these databases, but all the lists I ever saw were on that green paper. Yeah, it's green and white barred paper? Right, right. Um, well, maybe, Mr. Chairman, that's something we ought to find out, uh, trying to figure out where this uh, list came from. Uh, also, I was just curious, Mr. Marcisa, what, uh, when you were working through this list, uh, Ms. Wetzel was I think doing the right thing, going through and trying to straighten it out and figure out who should be on it and who shouldn't be on it. Why, why wouldn't you notice that, uh, you know, people like Marlon Fitzwater were on that list? I mean, it seemed like some of these names that I've heard, I don't know that much about it, but uh, it would be pretty obvious that they, they, would, they were people that no longer were working there and shouldn't be on this list. What, uh, didn't that occur to you when you were going through? Congressman, regarding Marlon Fitzwater, I saw Marlon Fitzwater in the White House complex during my detail. So if I had seen it, seen his name, it would not have raised any question in my mind. Uh, so you... That, that just happens to be one of them, sir. Yeah. So when you were going through this list, then, you didn't really see any names that you thought looked out of the ordinary. It just seemed like... Um, At that time, sir, no one stood out on, in my... Uh, in my duty. And so these press accounts that, that it talks about, that, that uh, there were all these obvious names on there, at least to you, this wasn't obvious. This was a list of people that you were told to check out and you were just going through and doing your job. Yes, sir. Long after the fact, when the files were collected and you put them all in a row, then it looks like something else. But at the time in the file, I was unaware that I was pulling people. I, it, I was unaware that I was pulling people who did not have access when I was, when I was ordering their files. And, and, and none of them stood out at the time. Well, I thought uh, maybe I misunderstood, but when I was uh, li listening to Ms. Uh, Wetzel's uh, testimony, she said that you had created a file on Marvin Fitzwater and sent it over. Is that the case? I, I don't believe she said that, sir. Cause I thought I'm, that's I'm what sorry. she said. But. I believed it was it was Tony who had created it. it. Was his name was the one that stood out to me in the batch of files. I thought you had said that. That I had thought Tony had, had put together. Uh, but you don't remember uh, creating his file. I regret that I don't. And it wasn't we. My attorney and I looked for that name on my list, my notes, and it was not on the notes. So it's possible, but I I, I don't recall that. I'm sorry, uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, uh, I'm going to yield back my time. But I would just like uh, I'm I'm. You know, I think as perplexed as anybody where this list came from. And uh, I would like uh, for the committee uh, to try to figure out what type of computer uh, the Secret Service is using. Uh, 
maybe what type of computers the White House is using and see if there's any way we can uh, match up the printers to what, uh, um, you know, what uh, this list looked like to see if we can figure out from that point of view where this came from. Mr. Livingstone, you? Mr. Mr. Peterson, um, by way of explanation, there are any number of people in the White House who can attest that well into 1994 that people like James Addison Baker were in fact on the Secret Service printout and, there, and it said active. There are many people other than us that can attest to that if, if asked. Uh, there were numerous projects at the White House where attempts were made on a personnel basis to streamline the list and identify people in a proper fashion. And, uh, and a lot of people were too dependent on that list, evidently, uh, early in the administration. And, but there are many other people who can attest other than us that there are great problems with that list. And as you suggest, a name like Mr. Baker uh, being on as late as 1994. Did the chairman yield on that? Uh, I'd be happy to yield. Uh, you know, the Secret Service said they update their list about every three days. I mean, they are not dealing with antiquated, out-of-date lists. They are very current, as we understood, on these lists. So it's, it's really hard for me to conceive that Mr. Baker's name would have been on, shown as an active uh, participant. If I just say, I, I've done, I used to be in the computer business, and I monkey around with this. And it's my experience in people that work with databases that they're very good about adding things, but they're not very good about deleting them. <laughs> and uh, that might be what's happened here. I mean, I, I really, uh, just about every time I get involved with this, something like this, that's what you'll find. But Ms. Westall looks like she's... Uh, yes, sir, if I, could, if I could tell you something that was told to me by the women who worked in the Secret Service office. I asked them why these lists were so outdated, why some of these names were still on there. What she told me, what they told me, was that uh, they had had computer people in to try and figure it out. And from what they could ascertain, the, when someone leaves the complex, when someone is, no longer works at the complex, they delete their name out of the past computer so that they can no longer get in, physically get into the complex. They can't use their past if they kept it. However, they're also supposed to delete them out of a second database, out of that group. And very often, she said, that had not happened. And that was the reason why the information we were getting was not completely accurate. Gentlemen's time has expired. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, I, I just would say that I think we need to find out more about these databases. And if the committee could get us some of that information, I think that would be helpful. I would uh, like to ask you Am's consent that uh, the list, which I believe was prepared by Ms. Wetzel, uh, White House personnel, security files, staff prior to 1-20-93, on which has been added the deactivation dates of all of the people on that list by the Secret Service, you know, which indicates that Mr. Baker was uh, deactivated as of August 26, 1993, which would be contrary to Mr. Livingstone's assertion that he was still on an active list in 1994. I would like to ask that that be made a part of the record without objection. And I am now prepared to recognize the gentleman from Connecticut, Mr. Shades, for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, I've been here during the entire hearing and allowed my uh, slot to pass because I really just wanted to kind of get a handle on, on where I was coming from and to, to really uh, observe all the witnesses. And I have to say that I try to remind myself, but you know, there by the grace of God could go I. I mean, I could be on that side and you, someone else could be on this side. But having said that, I then look at Billy Dale and somehow it's put in perspective for me. Because that man got <coughs> viciously attacked by the White House, and he was prosecuted by the White House, and he was an innocent man. So when I put that in the context, then I, I'm, I'm able to see a little balance to this hearing. Mr. Livingstone, I want to know who hired you. That's a simple question. Um, I came from the inaugural committee. Uh, Tell me who hired you. I don't need to know where you came. I don't want to use my time up that way. Who hired you? Fine. I, I believe I was hired by Mr. Kennedy. Mr. Kennedy hired you. Mr. Kennedy, do you believe that you hired him? As Mr. Nussbaum testified this morning. I want to know what you say. Did you hire... No, I'll ask the question. Did you hire Mr. Livingstone? Just as was the case this morning, I'll give you an answer if you're interested in it. I want to know if you hired him. Did you or didn't you hire him? Okay, I'm going to give you an answer if you'll let me answer. Okay. When I arrived, Craig had been designated, as I was informed by Vince Foster. I don't want a long story. Excuse me, Mr. Chairman, could this not count on my time? I just simply have a simple question. Did you hire him or did you not? 
who okay. hired Mr. Livingstone. Mr. Livingstone, you believe Mr. Kennedy did. Did you hire him? If, if I could give help, sir, I was in the office when Mr. Kennedy arrived. Right. But you were a detailee? No, sir. Were you a full-time employee? I was an advanced person. No, no. Uh, who hired I wasn't on payroll. I will use my entire five minutes to get at one simple question. You can't tell me Mr. Kennedy did and then backtrack. W some, if, if Mr. Kennedy wasn't there when you were hired, then who hired you? As I tried to start to tell you, uh, as I recall it, um, Ms. Christine Varney, as I testified. Who? Ms. Christine Varney, uh, who is the President's uh, Cabinet Secretary. Um, I had, uh, as I recall, it, she, she. You know what? Anybody, anybody me. can tell you. And there's not a person in this room who doesn't know who hired them for whatever job. It's disingenuous for you guys to take so long. Uh, who hired you? You won't I let us get a word out of our mouths. I, I'm trying to Congress tell you, me? I didn't go on payroll for a couple of weeks. Okay, when you went on payroll, who hired you? When I went on payroll, I believe I worked for Mr. Kennedy, sir. Okay, Mr. Kennedy, uh, when he went on payroll, were you the man in charge and did you hire him? We'll try again, Congressman. Okay. Mr. Mr. Chairman, may I ask a uh, request that I be allowed extra time if he takes needless uh, time to answer the question? I, uh, I'm not sure I can. Mr. Chairman, you I request unanimous consent that he have extra time so the gentleman can give Thank a you. full answer. All right. Thank you. We have agreement on both sides of the Thank aisle. Thank you very much. To, okay. Allow uh, three extra minutes. I don't think it'll take that long, Mr. Chairman. When I arrived, as both Craig and I have testified, Craig had been identified for this position. That was conveyed to me by, by, whom? by Vince Foster, Mr. Congressman. Conveyed that information to me. Okay? As Bernie testified, Craig's hire was ultimately the responsibility of the council's office. But as all of us were, there was a brief probationary period until Craig's FBI report came in. So he was acting until his FBI report came in, and the other necessary clearances for anyone to be employed in the White House complex were obtained. Once those clearances came in and were checked out, then the council's office, primarily me, but I report to Mr. Nussbaum as Mr. Nussbaum talked this morning, but primarily me, we ultimately decided to keep Craig. If, if you did not want uh, Mr. Livingstone to be hired, would he have been hired? After the process had, that I just described had been concluded, if I had concluded that he should not have had that job, I would have gone to my superiors and said so. Okay, so as far as I'm concerned, you hired him and that was your original answer. Thank you. It took a long time to get to that response. Now, I'd like to know why it took so long for... Um, First off, I want to know who hired you, Mr. Marcisi, Marcisa, excuse me. I'm sorry, sir. Who hired you, sir? Uh, I was brought over. I just want to know a simple question. Who hired you? Congressman. Uh, I didn't ask you, Mr. Kennedy. I understand that. I did not ask you a question. I asked this gentleman here, who hired you? I'm employed by the United States Army Criminal Investigation Command. Okay. So you're a detailee. Who requested that you work in the White House? Um, Mr. Kennedy wrote the letter, but Mr. Livingstone initiated. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Kennedy, uh, you wrote a letter to um, the Secretary of Defense. Why did you need to do that? Because he was employed by, Mr. Marcisa was employed by the Army, Congressman. So you write to the, the Secretary of Defense to, to ask for a detailee? Yes, sir. By name? Yes, sir. Okay. Why did you want him? I believe I previously testified, Mr. Livingston came to me and said that he wanted Mr. Marcisa to come over on a detailed basis. He wanted him in particular, as he conveyed to me at the time, because Mr. Marcisa, being an Army employee, had some experience and a top secret clearance with regard to military personnel in the White House. Thank you. You've answered the question. Um, Mr. Marcisa, you were uh, involved in looking at uh, the files that uh, both active and inactive files uh, provided to you by the FBI? I, uh, when I was working there, sir, I, every file I looked at, I, I was under the impression or believed that they were active files. So Mr. Baker would be an active uh, person. Was he asking to work for the Clinton White House? If he was on the list, he would be an active file, yes, sir. Didn't you not see certain people on that list that had actually been former employees, therefore n under no way should they have been in your possession? Didn't you have any sense whatsoever that they shouldn't be in your possession? Absolutely not. So you're telling me you thought it was your right 
to look at Mr. Baker or any other former employee. Based on what on what knowledge did you did you base that on, Congressman? If they were on the list, the access list, or they are on the F, the uh, Secret Service list, I believed that I was supposed to create a file. Okay. That's is what it, I did. Is this the list that was uh, that mysterious list that was in uh, that you talked was in the computer room? And the it, what? Where was that list? It was in the um, vault, sir. Okay, the vault. Now this list had no name attached to it. It was just this magical list. Who who formed this list? Um, I believe the Secret Service, but I don't recall that it had, it may have had a header, sir. I don't recall that. It may have said Secret Service, it may have had stamps on it. Were I don't you, recall were that. Were you ever asked to look at Billy Dale's file? No, sir. Mr. Livingstone, were you ever asked to look at Mr. Uh, Dale's file? I believe that... Uh, Would you get near the mic, please? I'd be happy to, sir. I believe that uh, there are numerous requests over the years... Were you asked to look at Mr. Dale's file? I Under believe, oath, I'm asking you I that question. I believe there are numerous requests over the years uh, from various investigative bodies asking if we had information on Mr. Dale. After Mr. Dale had left, were you asked to look at Mr. Dale's file? And uh, yes. You were, after he left? Yes. After he was no longer an employee? Yes, in response By whom? to your committee. By whom? Just our committee? Yeah. Now, uh, we asked you to do what? What did our committee ask you to do? Um, specifically, sir, I last recall being asked for the file in response to White House counsel's request. So it was the White House counsel's to produce, request? To, to produce the file. Okay, when was that? I, I don't know the specific date, sir. Mm -hmm. Recently. Okay. Bottom line, as far as I'm concerned, the White House misused the FBI and the Justice Department to go after an innocent man, and that innocent man is Mr. Dale. And this man here, this chairman of this committee, has spent two years just simply trying to get at the truth. And the reason why you're here now and not two years ago is that you all stonewalled it. And sadly, some of my colleagues on the other side of the aisle voted against finding the White House in contempt when they tried to continue this cover-up. I yield back. Gentleman's time has expired. Chair, now recognize the gentlelady from New York, Ms. Maloney, for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, Mr. Nussbaum, it's been uh, sa stated several times today by various members of this panel that you were subpoenaed to testify today. A subpoena gets media attention and uh, leaves the general impression that uh, you did not wish to cooperate. Did you ever at any time tell any member of this panel or any staff of this committee that you would not assist them in this inquiry? No. In fact, I voluntarily appeared to testify in deposition, uh, private, you know, but before the staff of the committee, I gave them the full story of what I knew and what I didn't know. And obviously, I didn't know about, about this particular error. Then we arranged, because of my schedule, we arranged that I would complete my testimony on other subjects on July 8th, to be mutually convenient to us, because I did have an active schedule and my lawyers had an active schedule, and all of a sudden, despite the fact that we made that agreement, all of a sudden I was told, you know, contrary to our prior conversations, that I had to show up for a, uh, a, a hearing today. Now, I said I would show up on any other day, any subsequent day subsequent to July 8th, I would make myself available as I made, my, as I made myself available before, that's what basically triggered the subpoena to appear on this date. I received a subpoena. I am now here prepared to answer any questions this committee has. But I have been fully cooperative with this committee. So in other words, you were willing to be fully cooperative. You had been cooperative, yet you were issued a subpoena, uh, possibly to create a general uh, unwillingness uh, oh. to cooperate, a, a negative impression of you. And well, I, I deeply I, feel this is an uh, unprofessional treatment of the, uh, and unfair treatment of, of this witness, Mr. Nesbaum. I, I really do. Well, all I would say, Congresswoman, is the subpoena was issued to get me here today. I, I, I sort of understand that, in, in, in a sense. But my story was told prior to, to coming here today, and I was told fully voluntarily before the staff, and I also volunteered to appear again at another deposition or volunteered to appear at this committee hearing if we could arrange a mutually convenient day. I'm not really all that angry at the subpoena, Rich. Okay. Well, Mr. Nesbaum, I think we should uh, discuss what we should do to correct this in the future. Thank you, Congressman. 
Uh, Mr. Nussbaum, do you, do you believe we should um, remove the entire process of reviewing background information from the White House and place it in an independent agency to prevent uh, any type of uh, appearance of impropriety in the future? No, I, I, look, I think the answer to that is no. But I do think after 30 years, I agree. I, I've been thinking about this now. After 30 years, I think the White House should take a look at the process. The FBI should take a look at the process from top to bottom. I'm sure improvements can be made in the process. I'm sure, basically, that there were, that problems arose in the last 30 years. And I think that's what the White House is doing now. I think that's what Jack Quinn is doing. And I think that's what Louis Free is doing. You have good people there, good people in the White House, and good people in the FBI. And now they're taking a fresh look at it. And, I'm, and the procedures they're coming up with are good procedures. And maybe it could even be better procedures. The, the White House and, and the FBI have come out with uh, new safeguards, which include uh, a requirement now that uh, on the new request forms, the actual signature of the official requesting the material uh, must be on it. And uh, it also must certify that the information is, is official for official purposes only. And likewise, it says that the consent of the file subject um, must also be on the document or some explanation as to why this cannot be obtained. Do you think if these guidelines had been in, in place, this problem would have happened? No. I think if those guidelines had been in place, this problem probably would not have happened. Uh, what we did when we came in is we basically followed the guidelines of prior administrations. Mm -hmm. We followed the processes of prior, of, of prior administrations. I think these guidelines are now a positive thing. I think, I must tell you very candidly, I think it's going to add to the paperwork, add to the bureaucracy, going to make my life a lot more difficult for the White House, and they're going to need, and, and other agencies, and they're going to need a lot more people to function on this thing. But, you know, in view of what happened, in view of the, fa in view of the fact there's been a potential loss of public confidence in the process, I think the steps taken by the administration are healthy steps to restore that confidence and to make sure the process works correctly. Do you think we should um, legislate these regulations and give the force of law behind them, or are the regulations enough? I, th I think for the time being, the regulations are enough. I think you should give them a chance to see how they work. I think they will work, even though it'll be a big pain to the next White House counsel, whether he's a Republican or a Democrat. And nonetheless, I think we should give them the chance to work. And if they do work, as I think they will work, I don't think legislation will prove necessary. I I'd just like to clarify it. Um, if the FBI had required that if before it would send over to the White House a previous report on any or current or former White House official, a written form had to be filled out by that official in advance, like the IRS now requires. Would this problem ever have uh, occurred, no. you believe? You don't think I, I, don't, I don't think this problem would, would have ever occurred. Let me just say one thing uh, while, I have, while I have the microphone. There's been suggestions here today by various questioners that the White House, the White House was involved in the prosecution of Billy Dale that the White House, you know, once the, once the investigation began, the White House somehow committed acts thereafter to cause the Justice Department uh, to indict Billy Dale. That is absolutely not true. It, it, the, the, the decision to prosecute Billy Dale was a decision made solely by the Justice Department under the basis of their investigation. There was absolutely no interference from the White House with respect to that investigation. And any suggestion to the contrary, any implication to the contrary, is false to the best of my knowledge. I'd like to ask uh, Mr. Marcisa. Yesterday, we received a huge uh, volume of uh, documents uh, from your attorney. And one of those documents is a memo from you to Mr. Livingston. And, and in that, the, the memo accompanying the document suggests that you were proceeding through a list of names by department. It appears that these documents that you requested from the FBI background uh, had summary reports uh, from the GSA, the CIA, AT&T, and the credit union uh, before you requested any information on people who, who worked on, uh, on the White House. Is that correct? The, that, ma'am, was a status report. Uh, Mr. Livingstone uh, wanted to know where we were in the update project. And uh, that's what that is. The gentlelady's time has expired, and I now recognize the gentleman from Florida. Ask him to yield to me for just 20 seconds. If you Thank you. I yield. Just very briefly to make the point that Mr. Nussbaum has stated that you adopted the procedures that have been used in past administration. 
we know of no evidence of any abuse of the system that occurred during the 30 years or so that that uh, had been in place. It seems to me that the, the error that was committed here was to put people into those positions to look at these files who really had no business looking at those files. And that was the, the difference, the change in procedure that yes. occurred. And I would yield it back to the gentleman from Florida. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mr. Livingston, uh, you did security for the Clinton campaign, was that correct? No, sir. What did you do? Did you work on the campaign? Um, I did advance. The inaugural? At the inaugural committee, sir? Did you do the, uh, the inaugural committee? Uh, security, did. okay, for the inaugural committee. Yes, sir. And did you feel you did a pretty good job? Um, yes, I do. I got a um, mm -hmm. very nice letter from the director of the Secret Service and a plaque from the Secret Service. Was the first lady or the president aware of your service? Um, I don't have any knowledge to that effect. Does anyone in your family have any rela relationship with the first uh, family? Absolutely not. None? Uh, did Mr. Kennedy, uh, did you report to Mr. Kennedy on the first day when you came into the White House, when you said he hired you? Who did you report to? I believe to I testified to earlier that I worked on advance prior to going on the payroll. I know, but the first day at the White House, who did you report to? When uh, you went on the payroll, who was the first one you talked to? I believe Ms. Uh, Cheryl Mills, counsel's office. Were you aware at any time of um, problems in the White House relating to security? Because you immediately uh, got into the security business. Um, were you aware of any leaks or problems with security at the White House? Well, as I testified earlier, my job, sir, as I understood it, was largely administrative at the White House. But were you aware of any uh, problems at the White House with security leaks? Were you aware of uh, some of the rumors about uh, problems uh, in the White House with the First uh, Lady and uh, the, the Secret Service and things leaking out? Were you aware of problems of that nature? I'm not sure when I first became aware of that, but I certainly am aware uh, Mr. of it today. Wat Mr. Watkins testified to our committee um, in reference to uh, an instance. This is Mr. Watkins' word. That, uh, a memo, the first page to the Secret Service, refers to an instance early in the administration where there was a press story about the First Lady throwing a lamp at the President and the, the, chairman, uh, and the press point secretary of, uh, story privilege, lasted Mr. Chairman. for two or three days chairman. or even longer. Were you aware of this incident? Point of uh, personal this privilege, is Mr. Mr. Watkins. The gentleman of state is point of personal privilege. I want to know how long we're going to allow this smear attempt on the First Family. This is far beyond questions about the files or any of the work related to these people who are here about some rumor about the First Lady throwing a lamp. I mean, how far is this going to go? Mr. Mr. I, Chairman, uh, uh, this is from our hearing. It's not what I said. It's what Mr. Watkins said. And these it, are reports that we it's have. It's not even remotely about related to the subject It now. is very much related. And the, if you the gentleman's point of personal privilege is not appropriate in view of the fact that the gentleman is questioning about events that occurred contemporaneously with these activities, which may well have, been, have accounted for the motivation behind uh, what was done. Uh, were you aware of any of these incidents or problems? Or was, did anyone talk to you? Did Mr. Kennedy talk to you about the need to tighten up uh, security personnel? Uh, can you ask me a more specific question? I'm sorry. Did, uh, did anyone talk to you about any incidents that were re reported or leaked to the press? Did Mr. Kennedy talk to anyone else or anyone else about tightening up on personnel? I yes or no? I don't believe I've ever had a conversation with Mr. Kennedy. Uh, who about produced this form? This isn't the standard uh, form 86, is it? This is a supplemental form. I can't see it, sir. Somebody take him a copy of that, please. This is a supplemental sorry. form. <laughs> <laughs> this is a this is a uh, this is a form. It's not a standard form 86. It says Office of the Counsel to the President, and it says return this form down in the third paragraph to Craig Livingston. This is not a standard form. This asks a question about your, pers about your uh, political affiliation. Is that not correct? Be glad to cite the page. Did you make this form up or did someone else make this form up? No, sir, I did not make this form up. Did, they, did these forms come back to you? 
It came back to my Did office. these forms go to career White House employees? People who had been there for years and years and years? Are you aware that they were distributed to folks? Are you aware, sir, that uh, you can distribute these to people who are Title III White, uh, White House uh, political appointees, but uh, if you ask these questions of, uh, of uh, career civil servants that, they, that, uh, that you may be breaking the law? I'm trying to keep up with all your questions, sir. I'm sorry. But you've never seen this form before that was to come back to you? No, sir. I didn't testify to that. I was just looking Have you seen the form? I'm just looking It says Craig that. Livingston on the front page. I just like to, to review. There's 27 pages. I just You like testified to in your Mr. testimony. Mr. Chairman, Mr. Point of, Chairman, to us, kind of privilege uh, here. if he could ask the witness one question, allow the witness to answer, and then go to the next question rather than just badgering with a series of questions. Well, I'm trying to find out if he's ever seen the form. Well, maybe if he asked one the question at a time, committee. he could do Mr. that. This process is embarrassing the Mr. entire Chairman. committee. You're throwing things on the witness uh, table. I mean... Mr. Chairman, the, do we the have the gentleman has an opportunity to answer to the, the question. The gentleman Would has you, an opportunity to answer the question. Uh, have you seen the form before? Sir, I'm, I'm trying to be precise. I'm looking through each page just to make sure it's part of a form that seems familiar to me. Yes, sir. Just Did you testify that the required uh, form in your testimony to us today is you said you use the standard form 86 and tax uh, check waiver forms for new hire, hires. But did this, in, this form, in fact, go to uh, people who had been there for years in an unprecedented fashion? May I answer that question? No, I'm asking Mr. Livingston. Mr. Chairman, here's somebody who wants to bring in some information the, uh, that could be the helpful. Gentleman, the gentleman we from have Florida truth? has the time, and he has the right to ask the question of whichever witness he's Mr. Livingston, to ask the well, uh, we can, uh, you can look at that and respond. I'll get back because I'll stay here until I get answers. Uh, Mr. Livingston, have you seen any FBI files that had any information relating to members of Congress or our staff or staff of this committee? Sir, I'm sorry. I didn't hear your question. I was talking to my counsel. There's, 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 I am not familiar with this particular form, which has many extemporaneous notes written into it, and I'm trying to be precise by reviewing each page. But uh, the front there's page edits. says it, it, it uh, says return to Craig Livingston, doesn't it? Okay, sir, I, I will answer your question. Page one of the form, it says personal data statement, has my name on it. And my, uh, my last question was, uh, have you seen any FBI files that had any information relating to members of Congress or members uh, of uh, this committee staff? Were you aware of any of the files that you had? Uh, Do you want me to? Finish reviewing this document, or do you want me to answer that question? I want to get answers to both questions. The gentleman's time I'm is expiring, and I would, I think he wants, a, he wants an answer to the last question. To your question, if you could repeat it about members of Congress, and I'll try to answer that. Have you, for the third time, seen any file that was requested by the FBI or any other file that had information relating to members of Congress or any of our staff? I have no knowledge of, of, of ever reviewing a congressional file. However, if a member of Congress were being nominated for, um, say, the President's Foreign Intelligence Advisory Board, something like that, that would be with pursuant to my duties. And were you aware that three of our That's staff another were question, Mr. Chairman. Point of order, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, I have a point of order. The gentlelady will state the point of order. Well, my point of order is that as I came in, uh, Mr. Livingstone has been asked to to uh, answer some questions about a form which uh, is under discussion right now, and I don't seem to have a copy of that form, and none of my members have a copy of that form. We're a part of the committee, too, and we'd like to know what's going on and what, what you're talking about here. I appreciate May the, we have a copy I of the form? I appreciate the, the uh, gentlelady's uh, inquiry, and we will make a copy of the form available to all of the members of the committee. We'd like to both have sides it now. Of the aisle. Uh, well, as, as Mr. Nussbaum indicated earlier, the uh, White House staff was underrated. We obviously are understaffed, too, when we're using members to deliver a uh, Well, why uh, is it that, that the members on your are, side of the aisle have it and the members on our side don't, don't have it, Mr. I Chairman? I believe uh, I do not have a copy of that particular member. Well, Mr. Well, Chairman, I have a parliamentary Chairman? inquiry. So I'm asking that all members be given an opportunity to review the the form that uh, Mr. Micah has been uh, discussing. And now point please to recognize the gentleman. A parliamentary inquiry before my questions, if I may, please. Gentleman, will If you would, I think, since this is not the Perry Mason show, I think rather than having documents thrown at the witness, it would be a courtesy to the men and women here and to the members of the committee 
that they would see those documents before they're flamboyantly demonstrated and tossed. I would ask, just out of the sake of courtesy, that we be given those, question, those, those documents before these individuals are questioned on. I would also ask that they be given them as well. I appreciate the gentleman's inquiry, and we will try to conform with that uh, suggestion. I think that we have, in fact, tried to make uh, documents available. And I now recognize you. May I have for a point five of order, minutes. first, Mr. Chairman? Point I of recognize order. the gentleman from Wisconsin for five minutes. Point of order, Mr. Chairman. The gentlelady will say it. Uh, earlier this morning, a document was handed out to the press. We had to ask for a copy and get it copied for each one of the members on this committee. Uh, you know, I've, I've been around here while well, it's the first time I've ever seen that. The minority has absolutely none of these papers you're talking about, and we are totally in the dark. Now, not only this paper, but frankly, I've, what else you're going to be pulling out of your hat over there, I'd very much like to see it before, and I, I think that the committee members are entitled to do that according to the rules of the House. I, I mean, I just uh, informed the lady that most of the documents we've been talking about here have been documents that came to both sides of the aisle. Uh, as uh, either from the White House or from other sources. I beg Actually, to differ, Mr. Chairman. Uh, let me not disagree with documents. you, if I may. That has not been the case. You have documents that we have not even seen. And for that reason, well, that's all we're asking is to be treated fairly. That's, that's all. And you shall indeed be treated fairly. Uh, thank I think you, Mr. The Chair Chairman. I will assure you that we will treat all members of the committee fairly. Mr. Chairman, I have additional the, documents. The documents that uh, we just referred to are the 11 pages that were entered into the record this morning, and I think they have been made available to you, Adam uh, uh, Collins, and, and, help, and other members of the committee. Mr. May Chairman, do you mind starting the clock over again so the gentleman will have five minutes to ask his question? I will indeed. Uh, the gentleman from Wisconsin. The gentleman will state his point of personal privilege. Uh, one, I've first time in my life I've been called flamboyant, but uh, number, uh, <laughs> that was number a two. Uh, number two is it was a choice of either throwing that document or shutting C-SPAN off the air, and I decided not to shut C-SPAN off the air with that camera. So, so much for that. Thank you. And now I will recognize yet again the gentleman from Wisconsin, Mr. Barrett, for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Ms. Wetzel, you had attempted to answer a question and you were cut off. I don't know if you still yeah. would like to do that, but I'd like to afford you the courtesy to make Thank your you. statement. The personal data statement, to my knowledge, was never given to a non-partisan career employee. They were only in political appointment packets. And if they did go to a career employee by accident, it was by accident in the security packet that we gave out. Uh, Mr. Myers Sesa, is that how you pronounce your name? Yes, sir. Uh, this, one of the big mysteries to me is this A to G mystery. Can you lead some light on the A to G mystery? Yes, sir. Um, I went through the update list, uh, department through department, and near, as I recall, near the end of that list was staff. I guess it's because it was S. And I uh, was working on, I was gleaning and uh, scrubbing, so to speak, everything on that, that was on that list that I believe needed to have access. They needed access to the White House. So I was going down that list and trying to make sure that, number one, they were still at the White House, and number two, that I didn't prevent them from coming into the White House in case of an emergency. Okay, and why did you stop at GO? That's as far as I got. Okay. When I left. All right, so it was simply, did you continue this project through the day that you left? Or, or did you stop the project prior to your leaving? I believe I stopped. I cleaned up all the SF-86s about two weeks before I left, but I was scrubbing that list, and that's why it's got everybody on it. Okay, you, you said that you were going department by department, and this was S for staff. Prior to this, what other lists did you, that you, did, you do? I did uh, the GSA segment, uh, C&P, volunteers, um, uh, an NSA, NS, uh, National Security Council, uh, each of those different, okay. the credit union, each of those departments. Okay, but volunteers would come after us, would it not? Well, that's correct. Uh, beg, to, beg to differ on that. There was very, very few volunteers who had to fill out uh, SF-86s. Only, as I recall, the only ones that did were those that were in sensitive positions. They had to have a background investigation. Okay. And, and had you filled, finished this project, Having completed staff, where would you have gone next? What, what's left after S? Uh, I'm not sure what was after that. I really don't. I don't know. But I believe I was at the. I believe I was pretty much at the end of the list. And I, in fact, um, 
I think the project was pretty close to being completed uh, when I did leave, okay. although I was at G. Okay. Ms. Wetzel, you, you talked about memos that you had sent over to the Secret Service. Mm -hmm. Can you explain to me what those memos were, cleanup memos, or uh, yes, what, exactly um, what those were? There were dozens of them. They were just little weekly, daily things when I would notice that, you know, a name was under, listed under a wrong office or a name needed to be deleted, I would just say to the Secret Service from Lisa, could you please take these names off the list and have you, do it. Have you produced those for this committee? Have those been requested? I left the Office of Personnel Security in September. Okay. And when I left, they were in the office. Okay. Do you know whether those have been... I have not seen them okay. since... The, the, the names in question, are, the, are those the types of names that you would have sent a memo concerning, or was it... I'm sorry? In other words, when, when you saw this, this list of names, did you send a memo with these names on it? When to, I saw to the Secret list Service. Of names. Did, you, did you see the list of, of, that has led to this giant brouhaha, these 300 or 400 names? When you saw that list and saw it was an error, did you send a memo, or is that not the type of thing that you would send a memo for? I, I did not work off the list that Tony worked off of, like okay. that piece of paper, okay. because there were several lists. We would constantly get new lists from Secret Service, and I would work off of those lists as we went through them. There's a misconception that there's one list for this whole project, and that's not true. There's continuous updates from the Secret Service. But what I'm asking is, at, at any point did you send a memo to the, to the Secret Service saying these names are erroneous. I continually sent memos to the Secret Service with okay. names when I would discover them, saying. Were any of those on. memos the same as contain the same names as the people that we're talking about today, the the A through G list? I, I don't recall. Okay, Mr. Livingstone. Mr. Bear, I, I think this might be of some help to the committee by way of explanation. Uh, so Can you get a little closer so to the microphone, go? Mr. Livingstone? Yes, Mr. Chairman. I'm sorry. Um, so that you don't think there were complete idiots. Um, to be sure, there are names that have from time to time been associated with previous administrations. Uh, in my capacity, one of the things that I, I came to do was maintain a, a list of uh, information of, of people that had access to CIA information. And very often, um, at the beginning of this project, uh, and I believe others will recall and can testify to this, that. Um, uh, the CIA had a list of people that had not been properly deleted, uh, certainly through the Reagan-Bush administration, but I believe all the way back through Carter, that said they had the most sensitive, sen the most sensitive clearances in the government. And they just had not been dropped because previous White Houses had not properly checked these people out. Okay, we, we've heard that, that the lists, though, are correct from the Secret Service. Are you saying, then, that they're not always correct or that, that, that they're... Oh, well, absolutely. I mean, I don't mean to impugn the Secret Service in any way, but um, there are many occasions. Um, uh, there are several individuals. One, uh, uh, the EOP security officer, Charles Easley, recalled a story to me recently that he remembers going through the Secret Service list well into 1993, okay. if not okay. 1994, deleting see, upwards could, of 200 times. As if expired, I could just have Ms. Wetzel answer Service the service. question since it was actually intended for her. I'm sorry, what was the question? The, the question was simply Did the Secret Service make any errors in these things? I mean, you talked about continuously updating them. I, I just want to. Yes, yes no, the okay. lists were uh, inaccurate. <coughs> Coming the gentleman's from time the has expired, Service. and the chair now recognizes the gentleman from Massachusetts, Mr. Blute, for five minutes. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman, and I commend you for holding these hearings to look into this matter. I think most of us on both sides of the aisle think that this is a very serious issue, that there was a serious breach of privacy of, uh, of American citizens in this case, and that serious questions are raised about it. Last week we heard from previous administrations, uh, the Carter, Reagan, and Bush officials who handled these matters, and I must say uh, that they handled them in a quite different fashion, and that there appeared to be a culture of responsibility with regard to the privacy of these documents in previous administrations that obviously did not exist in this administration. And I think that's very troubling, and I think this committee needs to find out uh, how that happened, why it happened, 
and to uh, put, uh, make suggestions as to how we can prevent it from happening in, uh, happening in the future. I asked the councils from previous administrations how they used these FBI documents to screen prospective White House uh, uh, clearance uh, uh, officials, officials to be cleared, and they said they looked, at, uh, looked for a pattern of abuse. And if somebody had a drinking problem that was a pattern or a drug problem that appeared to be a problem, uh, that would cause them to raise a flag and suggest that that White House person not be cleared. I think this committee is trying to see if there's a pattern with, uh, th on this issue and whether there was a, uh, an effort to use these documents in a way that uh, I think everyone would agree would be improper. And so, Mr. Livingstone, I'd like to pursue that line and ask you about your political experience uh, working uh, with the Heart Campaign. Uh, as you know, uh, Mr. Dennis Casey uh, has recently said that uh, he uh, had worked with you on that campaign and that you had suggested using negative information against Mondale uh, delegates to try to uh, hurt them in some way. Let me just report what he said. Dennis Casey, and this is from the New York Post, Dennis Casey, a Pennsylvania political operative, said Livingstone dug up dirt on state politicians in Hart's 1984 presidential campaign to blackmail them into supporting Hart over Walter Mondale, uh, and that Mr. Casey thought that this was inappropriate and brought that to the attention of higher-ups in the Hart campaign. I wonder if you would comment uh, on Mr. Casey's statement, did you indeed uh, uh, do what Mr. Casey says you did do? I'm sorry, sir. Are you saying Mr. Casey gave a deposition and said that he reported to higher-ups in the Hart campaign? Right. Well, Den uh, Dennis Casey has reported. I don't presume to ask you a question, sir, but who did he report that? The, the affidavit was given to the committee staff. Could we see it? Well, even beyond the no, affidavit. I'm not trying to be difficult. Because even beyond the affidavit, he has. It's uh, an accusation. The New York Post has reported uh, that uh, Dennis Casey. <laughs> well, it's in the affidavit. It's a sworn affidavit, sworn also. Affidavit. I'm not trying to I mean, it's a, it's a pretty easy question to answer. We're trying to get to the bottom of this. Don't try to be diversionary. Did you dig up dirt on, on Mondale? delegates or not? That's a pretty easy question to answer. And did you try to blackmail them into this or not? I'm, I'm perfectly not, able to say no if that's the case. I'm not trying to be difficult, sir, but by, by way of explanation, I have tried to find out who this Mr. Casey is. And I'm trying to give you a precise... So you've never met Mr. Casey? I'm not saying that. I, don't, I just don't recall who he is. I, I was in Pennsylvania, sir, and I believe the <clears> records will show if, if you're, I haven't had a chance to read this, so I don't know. Well, Mr. Marsesa, let me ask you, have you Sir, met Mr. Casey? Sir, can I Casey? just finish? I'm going sure. to answer your question very briefly. I'm not going to make a statement. I think I was in Pennsylvania in 1984 for seven or eight days. It was my first job uh, with a national campaign. I did advance. My, my job was to build a crowd in Market Square, if I recall right, in Pittsburgh. Um, that's what I did. I worked on the campaign through the end of the campaign. Uh, on the end of the campaign, I flew back on the plane with the whole staff, and when Mr. Hart ran again in 1987, he asked me to coordinate, help coordinate his announcement for president. So but no, you've I, never met Mr. Casey? Sir, but I, it was earlier alleged this morning that I was fired from the campaign and I didn't have a chance <coughs> to respond, so I'm trying to answer the question in total. I don't know that I've met Mr. Casey. Uh, okay, okay. I don't, I don't believe that I, w I ever made any comments like that to Mr. Casey or any other individual when I was in Pittsburgh. All right. Mr. Marsesa, did you ever meet Mr. Casey? Not to my knowledge. So you, neither of you, both of you are saying that you have not met Mr. Casey in the Hart campaign in Pennsylvania in 1984. As I said, I asked um, several people that ran the campaign, the person that ran Pennsylvania, the person that ran the travel with the president. But you would say that... Canada Daily, and, and, and none of them recall this incident. By right, putting Mr. Casey aside, you've never in political campaigns been involved in using negative information against uh, various opposition candidates I've as never, your role in the campaign. I've never been involved in opposition research. Let me ask you about while you were in the White House, and uh, we've had uh, numerous reports, some of which that you've talked about today, about you uh, uh, using or perusing FBI files of current or former, now former, Clinton administration officials. The Wall Street Journal reports that several people also said that Mr. Livingstone sometimes went around the old executive office building complex saying that he had, quote, inside information about various people and matters. 
Is that something that uh, happened or occurred uh, during your tenure at the White House? Um, I believe, as I testified earlier, that I talked with a number of people in my official capacity about uh, information that I had in files. I think that it would be widely known that I have information on people's files because I reviewed the files. Well, these reports seem to say that the White House officials who were uh, speaking to these reporters were concerned about your use of this information and that you were using it in a cavalier fashion, not as, as, as part of your duty. As I believe I testified earlier, um, without being able to look at my notes, but I believe that I testified earlier that uh, on, on one occasion, Ms. Evelyn Lieberman uh, admonished me about being insensitive to a particular person uh, about her background file. It only occurred once. Um, I don't recall ever having a discussion um, with Mr. Kennedy or, or any of my success of uh, Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Has expired. Mr. Chairman, and can I ask unanimous consent that we have that Mr. Casey's affidavit that was provided? Because nobody... It has been put in the record and the minority was there was when it was entered into the record. I would, before I recognize Mr. Moran, I'm going to ask Mr. Livingstone if you will read that affidavit now and indicate whether or not you deny the allegations that are in that or whether you can confirm the Mr. Allegation. Chairman, I'd be happy to. I wasn't trying to be difficult earlier. I understand. If you would just take time now before I recognize Mr. Moran to read the affidavit. Mr. Chairman, I'd just like to point out that's a very fair request of the chair. What I did have concern with was asking, and I think it violates due process, to ask the witness to comment to a deposition or affidavit that he's not a party to. I understand. And if, hasn't seen. Mr. Chairman, if I might, I was referring to a press report and not the affidavit. While he's reading that, could Mr. Marcesa also read it? Because there's a comment in there about him. I think he might want to take a look at it as well. You don't have a copy. My attorney asked if we could get a copy, Mr. Burton, please. Thank you. For providing you with a copy. Council's information uh, on page six it might speed up the process if you look at page six of that deposition. What about page six? Or is it? Two page deposition. I'm sorry, I was reading. I didn't hear it. Sorry. Is this a two page de de deposition, Mr. Chairman, or a six page deposition? Yep. About six pages. Oh. Well, we've just been handing out as two pages. Yeah. No, no, that's she, she made the list. That's what he's for. Yeah, 
Right. Well, there's just people yeah. in other Tony's work. Yeah, we can make Maybe. it available. Why don't you get copy? Uh, here. Okay, he's got it. but I would just ask both of you gentlemen if you can confirm or deny the allegations made by Mr. Casey in that uh, deposition. Let me see the document. Do you want me to go first, Mr. Chairman? Please. Uh, regarding Mr. Casey's statement, um, I can find a lot of things that I can question in there, such as uh, his allegation that we used a office in South Carson Street. We used Pete Flaherty, who was county commissioner's office. So that begins to be patently wrong. I read here where he's accusing me of stealing money. I never stole money. I resent that allegation. And it goes on and on. I never involved. Right. Patently Here, false, sir. We may, we may want to ask you more specific questions, but Mr. Uh, Livingstone. Mr. Chairman, first of all, um, uh, this sworn testimony is of events that happened 12 years ago, and I've stated that uh, I believe that was my first trip uh, ever in a national campaign. And all I recall doing there was working on crowd building, uh, some phone banks, uh, and I was only there seven or eight days. I mean, this gentleman makes it seem like I was, I was, I, I had a house or an apartment, and I lived there, and I worked there. As best of my ability, sir, I, I don't recall any of these events, and I don't believe they happened. Or meeting Mr. Casey or anything else. I mean, you well, I, I, I'm not going to rule it out. I, I've done, I would say, no less than 300, maybe 400 trips. And but you're basically saying that the, the allegations in that uh, deposition are incorrect. As he lays them out, I don't believe they happened, sir. All right. Gentleman from uh, Virginia is recognized for five minutes. Well, thank you, Mr. Chairman. 
You know, this series of hearings has uh, been enlightening uh, uh, to the extent that it uh, shows us what this Congress is capable of if we're persistent, if we're determined enough. We can truly uh, destroy people uh, if we choose to use the bully pulpit that is available to us. Uh, Mr. Livingstone and to some extent, I guess, Mr. Marcisa have now been depicted in a way that no one would touch them. Mr. Livingstone, better or worse, I'm sure is going to have difficulty ever getting another job. Uh, his reputation has been uh, smeared more than anyone I can imagine. We've done a hatchet job on him. Uh, I learned that um, it's very easy to believe what you see on paper. It seems irrefutable. I saw the Justice Department information on Mr. Dale, and I believed it. It was pretty damning stuff. But then I heard from some people who uh, were familiar with Mr. Dale, who uh, were, had no ax to grind, uh, and found that there, in fact, was an explanation and that uh, Mr. Dale was nothing like the person that was depicted in that Justice Department investigation. We could take that material right now, put it before us, read it out loud, and again, ruin Mr. Dale's reputation because there's no balance to it. I'm reading this stuff. This stuff looks awful. On the other hand, uh, perhaps having learned a little bit from the experience with Mr. Dale, I, I have talked to some people who worked in the White House with Mr. Livingston. You know, they have a different point of view about Mr. Livingston. Uh, I don't know. I don't know him uh, from Adam. Uh, and, but I have to say I'm, I'm a little more chastened and a little more inclined to try to get a balanced point of view. I, now, I told you, well, let me mention, too, uh, you know, the first thing that uh, you came up with, Mr. Chairman, starting these hearings was asking Mr. Livingstone whether or not he had worked in various campaigns, as though that was uh, some embarrassing information. I don't think that there is a staff person, the staff people surrounding the room here, who has not worked on various presidential campaigns. I don't think there's one of us. Now, there's probably some people in the audience that have not worked on various campaigns. But, and in fact, I, I have to say, I, I uh, respect uh, uh, Mr. Livingston for having a little more discerning judgment in which campaigns he has chosen to work with than in some others, but obviously that's coming from my perspective. There's nothing wrong with working in campaigns. And in fact, even if some of this stuff proved true, we're talking about a young man who gets involved in politics, and I don't think there's one, one of us that has not had some form of opposition research done. Uh, I mean, that's part of politics. It's not part that we brag about, but it is part of politics. That in itself is not necessarily damning. I don't think there's any effort to get any balanced perspective here, Mr. Chairman. I, now, I've told you what I thought was the purpose of these hearings. The purpose was to get a headline like this, Nussbaum obtained FBI file on Dale. <coughs> headlines, banner headlines in the Washington Times. It goes on to say that uh, White House Counsel Bernard Nussbaum sought and received confidential FBI background material on the travel Fire, uh, travel office on the fired travel office director seven months after he was ousted. It says uh, Representative Klinger, chairman of the House Investigating Committee, said Mr. Nussbaum's actions indicate the White House abused its power over the FBI, sought dirt on the fired employees long after they re were removed. We can only conclude that the White House counsel was looking for some mud to sling at Mr. Dale to try to justify outrageous conduct and so on. We've now heard from Mr. Nussbaum under oath 
He had no knowledge of the, what was going on. He didn't try to get these FBI files. His name was on a form. It was the same form that had been used by C. Boyd and Gray. Uh, but, you know, we have information that has been contorted to prove a point. And I have to say, I think that's the principal purpose of these hearings. Other than to smear anyone that we can get our hands on. Now, there are three questions we need to determine. And I do think there's a difference between malfeasance and misfeasance here, and there may have been some misfeasance. But what this committee needs to determine is, one, whether there was any criminal wrongdoing committed, two, whether there was the intent to commit any criminal wrongdoing, and three, whether anyone acted unethically. Beyond that, whether there were problems in management, deficiencies in process, and so on, doesn't seem to me that merits all the time and attention that we have devoted to these travel gate hearings. Now we call it file gate. Now, we have our witnesses under oath. Uh, let me ask Mr. Livingston and Mr. Masisa first. Did you intentionally commit any wrongdoing whatsoever with regard to the travel, uh, to, uh, excuse me, uh, to the uh, summaries of the FBI files that you were attempting to obtain? No, sir. No wrongdoing? No, sir. The gentleman's time Did you expired. Uh, uh, could I ask unanimous consent just to complete the, uh, uh, I, I will not take more than a further minute I, because uh, I, well, we have there's not no allowed, objection. We have not allowed others to exceed the time limit, but uh, is there objection? Uh, uh, no, let objection let is heard. Let him have it. There was objection? No. No, no, no objection. No objection. Gentlemen, may continue. Was, uh, was, grumbling, yeah. was there any, I, all I want to do is to ask you, was there any intent to commit wrongdoing? And did you, in fact, use any of that confidential information that you found in any way that was deliberately meant to embarrass uh, any individual that was included in that list? I did not misuse any information, sir, and it was not intentional. Uh, no, sir, and I'm not aware of anyone doing so. All right. Well, so we have it on the record, sworn testimony that there was no wrongdoing. Now we need to determine can... why we're having these hearings. Thank you, Mr. The Chairman. The gentleman uh, did uh, mention my name in connection with my opening session, opening series of questions, and I would uh, just assure the gentleman I in no way intend to impugn people's activity in political affairs. What I was suggesting was people who, when you're engaged in, in partisan polit political activity, should not then be put in charge of reviewing partisan files, uh, part, uh, files from the opposition. And I now recognize the gentleman from Virginia, Mr. Davis, for five Thank minutes. Thank you very much. Let, let me just note uh, that the, the headline, Nussbaum obtains file, uh, FBI file on Dale, uh, really was the result of documents, uh, a document that was produced subject to a subpoena, subpoena from this committee, and at first an exertion of executive privilege from the other side and then a contempt citation. This was not volunteered. We had to work very hard to get that. This wasn't something this committee produced. That was produced from the, uh, uh, from the White House and the media is then going to construe it as they want. That wasn't uh, the object here. It's been, unfortunately, a lot of... Um, Can I comment on that, Mr. Davis? Coming, um, yeah, let me, I'll give you a chance in just a minute. Let me, I've got sure. some questions. Uh, uh, first of all, let me just ask Mr. Masikas, I have a document here, 000083, that I think the staff could try to put in front of you. I just want to understand it. It says, we don't have that document. Uh, previous reports received. Mr. Chairman, we don't have that document. Could we have a copy? I, I can't. I've got five minutes. I just want to, I've got it. I've had it. We'll give you additional have time. I believe that document is available, should be available to all sides. Well, we don't it have it. It takes us a second to get it, Mr. Chairman. You know, they you got all these documents here, and somebody snatches out a off. document and, and, and tells a witness something. We just, we just want to have time well, to pull it out of these 5,000 that we if have. If this doesn't come like out of my time, I'm not going to give it, it, it off. Your time. I just want to. I, I just want to understand it. Sir. Um, the top, I think, is supposed to say everyone before 1988. There's a misspelling, but I think, isn't that, do you see that at the top left? Could you just explain yeah, that? Yes, sir. What that means? Does that mean they have not had a file? Uh, what this? Before that time? Yes, sir. What this is is a list that I believe I made up and sent it up to NSC, and I mentioned in I I referenced that these folks were all uh, had had previous backgrounds previous to 1988, and that they needed 
to tell me if they were still on staff. If they were not on staff, they needed to tell me that okay. so I could close those files. And if they were on staff, I needed to get SF-86s for them so I could so, do a reinvestigation. So this was merely a check by you before you requested any files? No, sir. From the FBI to, no, to see if, if you needed to, to update their list? No, sir. This is, a, this is a, like a progress report after I had gotten the previous investigations. I got the previous investigations, and from those previous investigations, which is the only way I could find out when the last investigation was, was from the previous investigation. I had to have that. So therefore, when I got the previous investigations, I then determined when their last investigation was, and that's what this, this, these dates mean, sir. So are you trying to say you wouldn't have gone ahead and looked through those? The only limited use you would have had for the files was to see when the previous uh, investigation was completed, and before you go through them again, you wanted to see if they were still on staff? Sir, what, yes. What, they, what I did is when they came in, I put the date of the, last, or the, of the next investigation, or the last investigation, I should say, on that file, and I knew by glancing at it that they needed to be updated. Let me just ask also, I, I notice this list is A through Z. This is not an A through G list. It's a lot of it uh, has been made over the A through G list versus A through right. uh, Z. Could you just explain briefly the differences? Well, as I said, this, this particular group, NSC, when I went into the day I went into the White House was completed, the files were completed completely made up and they were sitting in a file bin. And uh, all I did with those was take those in order. I believe I ordered the SBIs on those. Uh, uh, I guess the question is, why didn't you check if they were there before seeking their files instead of after? Yes, sir. I might, you have to read that in conjunction with uh, 124, mm -hmm. if you don't mind, sir. What's 124? Uh, Is that another document that, yes. that we don't have in front of us? All right. Right in front of you. It shoots the same package. All right. It is available to you. Okay. Done. Get it. Done. I'm sorry. All right. I got it. Go ahead. And in reading them together, what do we find out? Well, uh, this is uh, the, my request through Mr. Livingstone to uh, NSC asking uh, if they would check this list and tell me when the separation date is and if they're still there to tell me that. Okay. It would be helpful for our files to contain the date of separation. That's and, is, and is that A through G, the second list? Uh, yes, sir. It's C. Oh, that's also an A through Z update. Okay, I, I, I think I understand. You got it on the record. Okay, that, I, I think I understand what you're, what you're trying to do and how it was done, but you had the files first and then later on decided, did we, need these, did we really need to look at these files for an update or not? And the reason you did that is because you, wanted to, you wouldn't have known the date of their last check. Uh, yes, sir. I was, my purpose was to get these folks... Uh, an update. Updated. Okay. And who, uh, who authorized this Operation Update? That was my instructions when I took over the project. When I went on detail, right, that was. But who authorized my who authorized you to go ahead with Operation Update? Where did that authorization uh, come from? I believe I was directed by Mr. Livingstone. That's thank you. That was well, Mr. Livingstone. Let me just ask you for Operation Update. If you authorized Mr. Orsica, was this your own initiative, or did someone ask you to move ahead with Operation Update? If I might, uh, sure, Mr. Davis. Um, it was called the Update Project, okay. and that was a term that the previous administration, in fact, they had a file on it uh, the day I started, uh, that, and, and work that Ms. Gemmel had begun, uh, the long-term employee. But was this your own initiative? Was this Ms. Gemmel's uh, initiative? Or? As, as I was, by way of explanation, I was just trying to say, sir, when I arrived in the office, there was a, a file, and Ms. Gemmel had started this project, and we completed the project to the best of our ability as per her instructions. Okay, so basically she was the one who started it and you were finishing up her work. Is that your testimony? Absolutely, sir. Okay. Let me ask, um, the, uh, I, I'm still not clear on a, some questions Mr. Shays asked. In terms of moving your job from the inaugural committee to the White House, who hired you at the White House? Uh, we've heard different uh, comments. Do you know who made the actual decision to hire? Um, I, I, I realize that there's some element of mystery here. And there it really is because I think somebody hires really? me to the White House, I want to know who to thank and, and you know, who, who, who made the decision. I'm 
sorry, who to thank? Yeah, I wonder who do you, th you wanted the job at the White House. You, I think, could you talk to, about other jobs in the White House to people? I would, I, I don't know how it was on your campaign, but as, as you know, as campaigns evolve, some people right. get jobs, some people don't. Right. Um, um, I did advance, as I stated, uh, um, as, I, as I recall it, and this might not be correct, but as I recall it, um, I spoke with Ms. Christine Varney, who uh, introduced me to people in counsel's office, one of which I recall is Ms. Cheryl Mills. I had a brief conversation with Ms. Mills about the job, and she described the job to me as largely administrative. Um, she didn't think that she was going to be overseeing the office, but someone very soon was going to be appointed. As I understand it from my recollection, Mr. Kennedy was then appointed. So if Mr. Kennedy infers that... But you were on the job before he was appointed. Correct. Who told you to come into work the next day there as opposed to the military office or the grounds crew or somebody else? That's a very reasonable question, and, and, and I wish I had an adult answer to give you. But it was a long time ago. As I recall it, I was asked to report to Ms. Cheryl Mills' office um, of, of the first week or so of February. Okay, had you ever talked about other jobs in the White House with Harry Thomason or other people in the military office and other p potential jobs, which wouldn't have necessarily been out of the ordinary? Uh, I recall talking to um, Harry Thomason about job. Anybody else that you talked to about other potential jobs? Um, with other people I'm, at the I'm White House? I'm going to ask you just to wrap up with this answer, please, Mr. Livingston, because the gentleman's okay. time has expired. You may answer that question. Um, okay. Um, can I just think about it? We asked sure. me something that happened three and a half years ago. And I want to try and be precise. Um, I'm sure that I talked to any number of people that I worked at the campaign, sir, that then worked at the White House about employment in the government or at the White House. Uh, several people, I'm sure. Can I just follow up? I mean, you're not trying to be evasive, and you've mentioned Mr. Thomason as one. Is there anyone else you? Because it's, it's, it's been a the great. The time has expired. I have. I'm to just trying to get my answer, which was my question was done before the time. Just asking. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. You just Chairman. told Mr. Right. Moran that he didn't well, have the, extra time. The, the he has answered right. the question just once, and he asked another question. Did you, did you Mr. Answer? Chairman, I ask unanimous consent that the witness be given a sufficient time to answer the question. All right. Reserve uh, the right to object. I object because right. objection is heard. Not just a second. Just a moment. Regular Mr. order, please. Mr. Chairman, I'm, let, I'm not going to object. Me, uh, objection was heard. Because the question had already been asked. Can we have? Uh, I'm going to give regular you regular order, order and to let you answer it. All right, All right. Chairman. Chairman. And both of you, please, Mr. Chairman. All right. Just a moment. Just regular order. Just a moment here. The gentleman's time has expired. Je Chair recognizes the gentleman from Texas. I, I want to give Green. him, I want to make a unanimous consent that he had the time, but I just want to remind the Chair. There, there that was. This member on this side, Mr. Moran, I think it was, just asked for additional time. We, we so gave it to him. We, we, he got it. And, and I, I got just, it, and it's okay, only so fair I would, to. I would draw my objection. Mr. Right. Chairman, I'd be glad but, to let some of my time be right. used for him to answer. Mr. Livingston, so you're, you're right, under oath. The, I just uh, want to give you a chance to be complete if you have anything else to say. All right. Can we have regular order, please, or are we not going to proceed? The objection the chair heard a moment ago from the lady from Illinois was withdrawn. Is there any objection to the witness being given extra time to finish his answer? Hearing no objection, Mr. Livingston, you may, you may proceed. Yes, sir. I'm not trying to be evasive at all. Um, as I stated, I worked on the inaugural committee. Um, by all accounts, people thought I did a good job. The Secret Service uh, the staff. So I'm sure that I talked to any number of people as, in fact, I, now I'm giving me a chance to think about it. I remember filling out a form that all of us were asked to fill out at the inaugural committee and also after the election of where we'd like to work and, and things like that. So yes, there were several occasions when I talked to people either in presidential personnel or at the White House. I think the gentleman has given such answers as he's going to give. Okay, the chair now recognizes for five minutes the gentleman from Texas, Mr. Green. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Ms. Wenzel, in reading your testimony, and you started out as an intern and then moved on up to uh, executive assistant for the fall of 94, and one of the confusions I think I hear from my own constituents is, uh, is concerning the release from the Secret Service that said that they're their list that they provided was not compatible with the 400, the original 400. And in your testimony, you talk about Tony talking about Miss, uh, Mr. Marcia 
that was doing the update project, and that's the original 400 list. Is that correct? The update project was the updating of the, of the older names at the White House that needed to have the, uh, the FBI files checked. Is that what your testimony you were I did not to examine update? Tony's list in detail. I saw it. It was on a green and white paper that was from the Secret Service. Okay. And that, and was, that, was, uh, yeah, that was called the update list. No, it was called the Secret the Service List, project. actually. It was actually called the Secret Service List. Okay. But, he but was the project that Tony was working on was the update project, if that's your question. I'm sorry if okay. I'm Okay. Yeah, that's what I was trying to, uh, to get. In the day we hear there was more names than just 400, but the original uh, 400 names on the update project. And Ms. Gimmel, who testified last week, she was actually your supervisor, and I guess everyone supervised, she was the only carryover from the previous administration. Is that correct? In the hierarchy of the office, she wasn't necessarily everyone's supervisor, but she was the institutional memory of the office, and so therefore we took our direction from her. Okay. And your direct superior was Mr. Kennedy or Mr. Livingston or Ms. Gimmel at that time when you were hired, before she retired? I took direction from Mary Anderson and from Nancy Gimmel. My supervisor was Craig Livingstone. Okay. Okay. Mr. Livingston, I know you wanted to try and answer her into that. I, I hope that I, I can help clear one thing up. Um, you and many other people, you talked about your constituents being confused in this A through G thing and the Secret Service comments about this could not be our list. Mm. Well, of course not. It's not their list. It never was their list. The list that you're referring to, I believe that you're holding your hand, I can't see it, an A through G list, is merely a list that Ms. Wetzel uh, word processed from files that she went to archive. That was never, no one, no one none of us ever said or purported that was a Secret Service list. What we've always talked about, sir, is that the Secret Service list is a printout that we got from the U.S. Secret Service. And I have said today, and I know there are many other people besides me, career people who have been there for 12 years, that will dispute day to night the Secret Service statement that they initially I heard it was never wrong, then I heard it was three days updated, and then I heard it was 30 days updated. Um, it's, it's simply not true. It was often wrong. It often listed people like Mr. Baker in 1994 as being an active, active pass holder on their list. That's a fact. Okay. Ms. Absolutely. Ms. Winslow, did you ever see James Baker on one of those lists when you were working on it? I don't recall. I saw many names that I didn't recognize. Okay. Okay. Mr. Livingston, let me also on a daily basis is the Office of Security Personnel, what were your duties? I know uh, it's been reported, and again, we, we hear not only depositions or, or, or uh, sworn statements, but also press reports. And did you have a day-to-day hands-on operation with Ms. Wenzel and the staff there at the Office of I believe Security that Personnel? I, did. I believe that I did, sir. Okay. And I know one of my colleagues asked you the other concern I hear, and, and it, you may have at different times used classified information or privileged information from someone, whether it be an FBI report or an IRS, again, that's something that's recent. And is it your testimony that, that you never uh, engaged in any, any horseplay or kidding with someone by saying, by the way, I looked at your report and I know about whatever problem they may have? To be precise, sir, I've never testified that, uh, nor have I uh, shared classified or uh, materials. I think what I testified to is that I was admonished uh, early in the administration for approaching a uh, staffer uh, uh, and, and I believe what I said was um, everything's uh, finished with your permanent pass, we, you know, we've got all your materials, but uh, let's make sure you don't set off any fire extinguishers here at the White House. And that related to information in her file that at 
she had performed some, as I recall, a sorority prank or something like that. Okay. It wasn't that, intended that was the only, to be. That's the only incident that you have ever been admonished for at the White House of, of about in horseplay or kidding, sharing information that you had about someone's personal life. Well, let me say that I didn't share that information. I was talking to the individual, and, and in my mind's eye, I, I didn't mean to be flippant about it. Uh, it was my way of letting her know that that was something or activity, for, as, as I recall, it was fairly recent. And um, in all candor, I, I realize now that it was a stupid thing to say, and, and I was admonished, and I did my best not to do something like that again. To, to help you out and the other members of the committee, sir, um, there are many people who I had to meet with to talk about very difficult issues, um, some of which I'm sure were not happy with the fact that they had to talk to me about them. Uh, but at, at no time do I feel that I ever betrayed anyone's confidence or uh, materials with other individuals at any time with that information that was imparted to me. Um, I mentioned that because, uh, you know, we had to talk about tax issues and marital issues or, or whatever. I, I, won't, I won't go into details to respect the people's privacy, of course, but I can see how you might rub, rub somebody the wrong way. Uh, you have to remember, and, or I'd ask you to remember, to be polite, sir. I'd ask you to remember that uh, in that first year at the White House, uh, there was a... We were getting a lot of things done, you know, work with short staff and, um, you know, we made a few mistakes. Apparently, obviously, that's why we're here today. The gentleman's time has expired. I now recognize the gentleman from Indiana, Mr. McIntosh, for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Livingstone, who authorized Project Update? I'm sorry, I, I don't know. Uh, who authorized Project Update? Uh, as... Um, as I stated earlier, sir, the, the project is referred to as the update project. And as I, as I, as I testified a, f a few minutes ago, sir, that was a project that was already ongoing when I got into the office, when I reported for work by uh, Ms. Nancy Gemmel, who is an employee of the, uh, both of, uh, the, the Reagan and Bush administrations. Who authorized this continuation after you came on board in the office? Ms. Gemmel explained it to me that this was just a standard operating procedure for the office and that we needed to continue it. And so you didn't discuss the update project with Mr. Kennedy or anyone in the White House Counsel's office? I wouldn't have believed at the time that there was a reason to do it. So the answer is no? To the best of my ability, no. And why was Project Update given priority over other clearances, hiring a special detailee to come in and work on it? when you were behind on clearances for some of the other new staff? Uh, the update project, sir, was not given a special priority. If anything, uh, I think it was given a lower priority because we knew that these were individuals who had uh, been cleared by both counsel, albeit a previous counsel, and the Secret Service. So therefore, we, we had no reason to believe that these people were, were threats or had problems uh, that weren't previously resolved. So. Did Mr. Marcisa have other responsibilities in addition to the update project? I believe that he's testified to that. I know of several of them. And that this was given a low priority among all the things he was working on? I don't know that it was given a particular priority at all, sir. I'm just saying it. What you inferred that it was given a special priority and that's why he was brought on. That's simply not the case. I was using your words for low priority. Uh, switching subjects, are, are you familiar with the White House office database? Um, not very familiar. Uh, if you could refresh my memory of what it is. Um, yeah, what I might do is ask the staff to bring you a copy of a Washington Times article which <laughs> describes it in great deal this detail this morning. It's apparently a database of people who had appointments or were contacted by the White House on issues. Some people referred to it as Big Brother. Does that refresh your memory? Could we get more than one copy of this before the, uh, the, the You're welcome to go buy a copy of the Washington Times if you want. <laughs> Point of order, Mr. Chairman, if we're going to question the witness on a Washington Times article, no, no, my, right up there with the deposition, Mr. Chairman, my question to, to the witness to is, is my question to the witness is he familiar and I would ask for additional time because of the interruptions. 
is he familiar with the White House Office database? I think That's my we're question. Read this article. You want to question him on this article? Uh, my question is, is he familiar with the White House Office database? I believe he answered that question. Uh, would the witness repeat his answer? I missed it. Uh, I'm not familiar with the White House Office database system, as you described it. Uh, are you familiar with anything that is known as Big Brother or a White House database? White House Office database with the initials W-H-O-D-B? Um, to answer your first part of your question, I'm not familiar with anything at the White House that would be called Big Brother. I, I, your second part of your question? Anything that was known as the White House Office Database or WHODB? I think you asked me that question before and I, and I said I'm not familiar with it. You're not familiar with it? Would, As you described it. Did you have a computer in your office that was tied into other computers in the White House? I have a computer in my office which is tied in through what's called all-in-one for email and uh, calendars, that kind of thing. Are, through that computer, did you have access to any other databases in the White House that might contain information about persons seeking access in the White House? Um, I think that question might be better posed to Ms. Wetzel. Um, there's a pro, and I don't mean to put Ms. Wetzel on the spot in any way. There's a program that we use called security tracking, which is part of a database program. And that's why I'm, I'm not trying to be difficult with you. I'm just trying to be precise. Um, we use that uh, program for security tracking, but that's not something that I used. Uh, uh, Ms. Wetzel and other people in the office used it for the purpose solely of updating uh, security files. And, and that alternative program was on a separate computer that was not hooked into all-in-one? Uh, Ms. Wetzel, you might know that. Oh, thank you. Um, <clears throat> the security tracking system, we could get into we got, obviously got into it on the same personal computer as we got into all-in-one. However, nobody shared that information outside of our office, except the executive office of the president, security officer, Chuck Easley. He also uses the security tracking system. However, our files, our White House files, are not available to him through that system. Uh, could others using all-in-one have access to the security tracking system? I do not believe so, no. So to the best of your knowledge, the security that was built into all-in-one should not allow them to have access to your security tracking system? The security tracking system was run by computer people in the executive office of the president, security people, we to apply for a special account to even have access to it and have a password. And as far as I could tell, it was strictly monitored and that no one had access to it outside of our office. But you were able to get access to it through the same uh, computer that also allowed you to have access to all-in-one? The same personal computer, yes. Okay. Did, did the same software program that allowed you to have access to all-in-one also allow you to have access to this security tracking system? I'm trying to remember. I left working there in September, but as as far as I know, they were different software packages, right. the but I could be wrong. The gentleman's time has expired. The chair has received numerous requests for a break at this time, and I've consulted with our ranking minority member, the lady from Illinois, and I'm going to call a recess till 5.05. .05. That's about 13 minutes. I'm going to ask all the participants, particularly the witnesses and the next members whose turn it is to question, to respect the 5.05 .05 so we can get back started on time. With that, the committee will be in recess for uh, about 13 minutes.
Thank you.